Good morning Linux lovers, my name is Wimpy, welcome to my world. Um, it's another time to take a look at the Ubuntu Retro Remix. Um, so uh, it was a few nights ago, I think I was looking at this. Um, it's been a busy uh, time for various reasons, uh, but I have done some work on the Ubuntu Retro Remix. Uh, last time uh, we, uh, we took a look at how it was working and then uh, started to go through some refactoring to improve the way it works. So um, a lot of that has been implemented. So I just want to sort of review where we are. Much improved build process now. Can also build for 32-bit um, and 64-bit on the Raspberry Pi. So going to take a look through all of that and um, uh, hopefully get that committed back up to the project because there's loads of changes. I'm not sure it, it makes for a good piecemeal set of commits. I think I'm just going to have to do sort of a massive change just to say this was the, the huge refactoring. So um, that's uh, that's the plan at least. Uh, we'll, um, we'll sort of review it all and get it all committed. And I have got a new image built, uh, which I haven't tested yet. So we'll actually test that to see if uh, I've managed to fix a, a few of the last sort of uh, little bugs in the system. Um, but actually it's performing really well. I'm very, I'm very pleased with how the thing works. Uh, I did actually sit down and uh, get far too involved in playing a bunch of games the other evening. So, um, so yeah, I'm gonna be going through all of that stuff. Um, and I'll also explain a quirk uh, that I've seen. <laughs> Good morning, Danny. How are you? I'm glad you were able to wake up a bit earlier than usual. Me too as well. I woke up early today on account of going to bed extremely early yesterday. Uh, exhausted after uh, after some uh, work-related things. So uh, starting my day with a bit of fun because uh, it's Thursday. So it's always a late evening on a uh, on a Thursday for me because we stream over at Slim DevOps on uh, a Thursday evening for me, uh, which we'll be doing today. So if you're not subscribed, you want to get following over there because yesterday we did a live stream with the uh, Cloud Native Compute Foundation, uh, covered a whole bunch of stuff on how to uh, secure security scan, create a software bill of materials for your containers, then minify them and to better secure them. And we covered all of that in like a one hour, very dense, information dense live stream with them. We're going to do a rerun of that. We're going to deeper dive into some of the concepts around Docker Slim. So um, head over there. Um, oh yeah, the ad breaks. They, they should be off at the moment, hopefully. Um, one of those ads, nightmare. I'll get back to that later. So get following over there because we're going to be doing some stuff. Um, you, anyone that saw yesterday's and have got questions, then uh, we can dive into that as well. But today, or at least for now, this morning, it's all about uh, retro gaming on the Raspberry Pi. I'm glad that Popey's here. Hello, hello, Popey. Um, also, hello, uh, Real 8. Welcome to the stream. Um, and Luke, morning, morning Luke, and thank you very much for the uh, revised uh, Retro Remix logo. So uh, let's let's take a look at this. So Popey, it's good that you're here because it was your recommendation ages ago to take a look at Ludo uh, as the thing to build around, um, and that's really paying off now. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the UK here uh, and I mostly do morning streams. So I, I stream most mornings around this time. Uh, I've had a few days break because I've been super busy with work. Um, but I, I tend to try and start my days some somewhere between like eight and ten o'clock. I do a stream here. Uh, so, you know, if you're not followed, uh, do, do that thing. <laughs> I'm here most days and then a couple of nights a week I do it uh, later to sort of uh, catch friends in America. So, um, the first thing is, I thought that the Retro Remix was struggling for performance. And I've been through an ungodly amount of information about the Video Core SoC and its GPU trying to track down the cause of what was clearly 
um, you know, a performance problem on the GPU, or so I thought. Anyway, after more hours than I wish to admit, uh, it turned out it was a quirk of my capture card. So I connected the Pi up to a capture card and then I'm, I'm basically creating a virtual monitor off of that capture device to see the Raspberry Pi. And I discovered completely by chance that if I used XR and R whilst the Retro Remix was running through the capture device to reset the refresh rate to 60 hertz, all the performance problems go away and it runs absolutely beautifully. So armed with this information, I wandered around the house plugging uh, this Raspberry Pi into different TVs and screens and what have you, everything I could plug it into, and it worked swimmingly everywhere. The performance is fantastic. So that was like uh, a cause for concern because I, I, I really thought I needed to fix something. Turns out there wasn't a problem to fix. It's a quirk of my capture device, and I know how to work around that somewhat now. Um, and the other thing that we fixed is, um, so no, it's it's not even that. I don't even understand it because my capture device actually says it's synced at 60 hertz. And I don't even change the resolution. I just reset the refresh rate to 60 hertz through XR and R, and it's fine. Uh, but on anything else I plug it into, it just works. Uh, so it's very unusual. I've never seen it before. And I've actually spent a bit of time this morning po poking around in the timings of the capture device to see if I can like force it to actually do the right thing out the box. And I, I can't, but you know, it doesn't matter. I have other capture devices I can tinker with at some other time. Um, but it works uh, and it works extremely well. The other things that work is um, I tested using uh, Samba to put ROMs on the device. Two things I've learned there. Over wi wired Ethernet, that works uh, extremely well. Over Wi-Fi on the Raspberry Pi, Samba over Wi-Fi on the Raspberry Pi, I think um, you could shout ones and zeros at the Raspberry Pi faster than it transfers. So although it has the ability to connect over Wi-Fi, it's frankly useless. Uh, it's just simply no good. Interestingly, uh, if you enable SSH and do that over Wi-Fi, that works significantly better. So for putting ROMs on the device, you can certainly do it over the network, but it's way, way, way better over Ethernet than uh, wired. So that's something else that I learned. Um, I'll just catch up. There's a couple of questions here. So um, Real 8 says, I only found out about you when I when I raided you a few weeks back. <laughs> You're welcome. We try, I always try and find someone new and interesting to uh, one raid and follow uh, when I'm doing stuff. So um, uh, let's have a look here. What's this question? Uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, what's that? Tigra, Tigran. Um, when I used uh, it to capture my switch once, there was an odd purple tint to the output. I think the purple tints is when you've got the color spaces mixed on the input and the output, because I can create a purple tint by uh, setting the, uh, a mismatch of color spaces on the input and the output. Hello, way too cool. Um, welcome, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Tigra might be a speller. Oh. Oh dear. Yes, that does seem to be the case, doesn't it? I really need to get this moderator stuff sorted, don't I? Uh, oh gosh. Uh... Right, there we go. Got sorted. Um, thanks, Dan Danny, for pointing that out. Um, right then, so where were we? Well, I tell you what, we'll look through we'll look through the revised build process because it is significantly improved now. So let's just hop over here. Um, this is the new logo. Uh, thank you, Luke, for working on that. I really appreciate it. I believe that's the Ludo pink that they use. Uh, I'm a little bit off brand elsewhere in the retro remix at the moment, but we'll we'll fix that some other time. We don't need to look at Git yet. We want this. So let's let's start at the top here. So 
Last time we looked at this, the Retro Remix was uh, taking a pre-installed server image of Ubuntu and then um, mounting that image and using that as a starting point. Um, and that's just a hangover from some work I was doing when I worked at Canonical on how we were building these images. Uh, we've changed all of that now and I'll go through those changes here. Um, morning Jeff, how you doing? <laughs> I'm all about the transitions and and um, you know channel point redemptions there's a whole bunch of stuff coming on that as well uh, that I've been working on so there was the first Atom TV live stream last night and Yannick and I were were quite prominent in the <laughs> like that in fact <laughs> uh, we're quite prominent in that because of the stuff we've been doing within in right in our own socket servers and integrating with Atom thank you everyone uh feel free to spam the channel <laughs> um <laughs> hello indeed hello who was that <laughs> Popey. um so what was this danny uh <laughs> automated obs yeah i mean you got no idea i oh gosh uh, i'm gonna have to put the value of these up aren't i i could turn i got uh, so uh, one of the channels that was featured on Atom TV last night, they have five minutes of mayhem where somebody can use a channel point vector. <laughs> and it's a bit like this, a channel point redemption to turn on a bunch of cheap transitions and for five people, five minutes people can just basically spam the channel with random memes and what have you. A lot like what's happening now. I'm going to have to change the value of these, <laughs> these things. <laughs> <clears throat> well, there we go. I'm glad you're all having fun with that. Um, right, are we finished? Shall I carry on now? Oh, no, we're glitching. There we go. <laughs> right then. So nothing's changed here. We're still using the System D container to uh, run everything inside a container. The big change is here in the bootstrapping. <laughs> you like the glitchy one. I still I need to do a bit more work on that one. Um, so what we're doing now, um, and I learned a couple of things here, is we're, we're now using Deb Bootstrap to bring up the uh, absolute base image of the OS. I've just noticed that I don't have these lights turned on. Let's turn those on now. There we go. Um, so um, we were, uh, like I say, mounting the... Um, the uh the pre-installed server image now we um spit, use deb bootstrap to create a minimal os uh, and that's a two-stage process um and we're actually using our own uh end spawn wrapper to complete the second stage which is quite nice so we're sort of self self bootstrapping there and then we shove a template of the uh, sources list in we do an update and an upgrade and then this is a, a curiosity. I have discovered that this package here, when um, the official Ubuntu images are built, actually resolves the package dependencies differently if it's installed with apt as opposed to apt-get. And it also appears that in the image building process, the package resolution, resolution is the same behavior as apt. And I think this is a bug and I need to dig into this a bit more and report it. And the outcome of that is that the Ubuntu server images for ARM, in fact, for any uh, architecture, have the full QMU system uh, x86 stack uh, that gets pulled in through this random package resolution. So I'm working around this slightly. So up here, I... Um, I seed, or rather, you know, in specifically include this package in the initial bootstrapping stage, which is the minimum uh, dependency requirement to satisfy this utility here. And that actually then prevents, uh, and by, then by installing this stuff, <laughs> good morning, <laughs> good morning, Tackle, how are you doing? Uh, and then by uh, installing uh, the Cloudinit um, FS Grow Root with apt-get, 
it then doesn't pull in all of that other stuff. So it keeps the size of the image down. Um, and then because of the networking stuff, it occurred to me it was a good idea to have the Abahi daemon, which is, you know, bonjour or zero comp or whatever. Um, and that helps advertise those network services on this device. So when um, it comes up and you want to connect to it over Samba, it's easily discoverable on the network. So we do that. I then have a little stub around this at the moment, um, but then we install the Ubuntu standard user space tooling. Um, and that gives us like our, our core operating system. And then we go and just disable this um, Ubuntu Advantage stuff because this is largely going to be a sort of a turn it on, turn it off device. There is no need for all of this additional stuff to be running in the background. So our second stage in the build process is to actually install Ludo and all the bits it requires. So this installs the uh, graphics stack and I'm probably going to replace this at some point with a more um, specific set of packages that satisfy the X requirements because we don't need all of the drivers for all of the GPUs because we know we're targeting a Raspberry Pi here. Uh, then this brings up um, the packages that Ludo needs when it's running in an integrated OS mode. Um, so uh, Blue Z for Bluetooth connectivity and then Conman is what's being used for all of the network um, uh, connection stuff. Obviously SSH and then we install Samba and I've now discovered that I can get away with the minimal Samba requirements so we can actually further reduce the image size uh, there as well. So uh, good morning. Um, uh, Linux Paul, hello, how you doing? So, um, there was a slightly newer version of Ludo, so we're including that, and then we just juggle some things around, and this is new, and I don't know if it's going to work. So, I'm just changing the way that um, Ludo in its OS integrated mode is brought up. So um, when it runs in the root context, uh, I'm trying to coerce the home directory here, and I don't know if that's going to work. And then after Ludo exits, I'm changing the file permissions of everything under storage to be that of the regular user account. And that's because we've got this weird sort of split horizon situation where we could potentially be launched into the same home directory into user context root or a regular user so i'm just trying to sort of like get integrate that a bit better this is a hack at the moment i'm going to have a think about whether i can use run user or um the sudo as permissions and setting environment uh, on launch of things to coerce the way that you know file permissions are written but this is just to sort of test the concept at the moment we'll, we'll see how we go hello is that yannick good morning yannick how you doing thanks for stopping by how dare you stream during lunch break oh is that what it is well that's convenient isn't it um so then we just uh create some desktop files and what have you uh this is the display manager we've covered that before nothing new here nothing new here either this is the the, the basic configuration um, and then this is the uh, desktop environment. Again, nothing's changed here, I don't think. It's pretty much the same stuff we've seen before. We stick in some default settings to make it look pink. Um, this is new. So now because we're using Deb Bootstrap, at no point in this process it does a kernel exist in the image. So toward the end of the image building process, this is where we actually um, sort of uh, deploy the Raspberry Pi kernel into the image and we do that toward the end to prevent um, unnecessary uh, initial RAM disk rebuilds, something that different apt operations uh, hooks in apt can trigger. So we're doing this at the end so that, oh, because it's quite slow to rebuild the initial RAM disk. Um, so we, we try and do it once at the end. So this is everything to do with the Raspberry Pi firmware, kernel, uh, bootloader. It all happens in this stage here. Morning, Dust. How you doing? I enjoyed last night's stream. Thank you very much uh, to you and Greg for the kind words, particularly <laughs> all of Yannick's shenanigans. 
Um, so um, this is the last piece where we just need to copy the device tree around and I am able to build um, this image on ARM64 and ARMHF now. So although Ludo is currently only distributed in ARMHF um, for the Raspberry Pi, which is fine, um, I've got um, a, a building block here to make 64-bit images at some point in the future as well, should I need to, which I may look into. Um, and then we've just got some random configuration stuff. So uh, mostly this is system D related and I've no idea if this is going to work. Oh, bother. Look at what I've done. I've built an image and I've got three characters, three very important characters missing from there. So uh, we can fix this. Let's go and rebuild the image. And what we can do is we can use this process to only do the last stages. So we only need the config clean image. We don't even need the hash stage. So let's just go and uh, have that those last stages rerun. So this I'm doing on my VM. Um, so this is running under uh, quick MU. So this will just do the config stage and rebuild the image. So we'll, we'll come back to that in just a moment. Uh, and what I'm hoping is going to happen uh, is I'm trying to decipher how the early boot of System D gets evaluated. And so far I'm failing. Uh, and I think I'm going to fail again. In fact, I think it's highly likely this, this may not even boot at all this image. But what we're trying to do is um, regenerate the SSH host keys. The but on the first boot of the system ever and only do it then. So obviously as part of the image building process, we strip out all of that, you know, distinctive information. So that all gets recreated on first boot. And one of those things is the SSH host keys. You don't make a pre-installed image with the same host keys on it. That's obviously a security issue. So this, you know, works, but I can't seem to find the appropriate condition to instruct system D, it should only do this on first boot. And it turns out condition first boot, which is where I started, is I think a bit of a misnomer because there are so many conditions hidden behind that. Anyway, I'm having another go with this and what I'm actually doing to try and coerce the first boot to meet this condition is instead of shipping the image with an empty machine ID. So the machine ID file existing, but being empty, I am deleting the machine ID file entirely. So it may work, but I don't know. My advice was looking at bugs to do this, but it turns out that early in the system D process, it actually populates the machine ID. So this condition is never met, at least not where I want this to run. So. I'm having fun here uh, and it's like a simple thing and I've seen a dirty hack for this in the uh, the way that Raspberry Pi OS works and I, I'm trying to do it the right way uh, but I'm increasingly thinking I will just do it the like the hacky way I've seen it in the other implementation anyway. This is our Samba configuration. I tweaked this and I couldn't do anything to make it perform better over um <laughs> thank you for the follow Tanvir 362. Thanks Tanvir. I um couldn't find anything to make uh the performance over Wi-Fi any better so, uh, other than this, but performance over Wi-Fi is bobbins over ethernet it's perfectly fine and the hard locking of the samba configuration was because i'd got mismatched um user ids so um that now you can now toggle the samba on and off and it doesn't lock the whole device up which is good um so this is unchanged here this is creating our um our regular user uh nothing changed there and then this is something I may revisit. Um, I'm trying to find ways to, um, we have to run Ludo in the root context when it runs in its own as the, like the sole device thing. And I'm trying to find ways to 
uh, limit how much of those processes actually run in the root context. So this was a first step towards that where we only execute the Ludo binary as root. Um, and then this comment here is a note to me that I think if we then add some policy kit rules around being able to manage system D units, then a regular user can launch the um, the Ludo binary and then also when you toggle SSH and Samba on and off uh, you won't get prompted for passwords it can actually toggle those uh, pieces as well so this is a, a, a sort of a nicety for the future that I'm thinking about how we go about implementing that I see there's some questions here <laughs> three characters are missing indeed and the whole word is empty <laughs> Right then, so um, you like that, do you? That follow goal overlay is actually the Twitch one that you can turn on now. Um, and then uh, I'm using Atom to display that follower goal uh, when somebody follows. And then I've uh, done some monkeying around with it. So I've been able to color it to match my sort of theme and style as opposed to the, the purple that, um, you know, you get by default. Uh, morning, morning, DJ Razor. How you doing? Atom crashed. No. Why would you? Why would you suggest such a thing? <clears throat> uh, socket dropout. I think. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, don't suppose you've got any experience dealing with web sockets fine-tuning them at all uh me no <laughs> uh i would say um rank amateur at that stuff uh so this is the change i'm making here to completely delete the machine id as opposed to blanking it we'll see if that works the image building process is the same as always um and then uh we were able to clean this up so this is kind of fun this is a d nice little fun thing you can do. So here we're creating uh, an environment variable in bash using an environment variable to form part of the environment variable. So you can do sort of factories and generators in bash, it turns out. <laughs> it's, it's remarkable uh, just uh, how, how far you can go with this stuff. Right then, um, and so now what we've got is we've got several stages in the build process, which is why I was able to pick up that build from stage five without having to do a complete rebuild. So if I just bring up um, the VM, uh, that's finished building. So we'll we'll take a look at that. So in the, oops, let's try that again. In the VM, that's currently building where? here so we're building in the armhf version what we'll see now is there are a number of these directories so in stage five this is like a cache of everything that happens in stage five and it waterfalls so when you enter stage five it syncs everything from stage four over stage five um, so that you can pick up from you know where you were so it just sort of speeds up the whole rebuild process <clears throat> you never knew about Atom. Oh, well, Dust here is uh, the lead developer for Atom. Uh, and this is a, a new tool to do uh, OBS automation and integration. So Atom.tv is the website and you can find their Twitch channel and their Discord and their Twitter from there. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, it's great. We're having a lot of fun tinkering with that. I've got loads of stuff that's in the works that I haven't actually landed in my um, uh, <coughs> in air quotes production uh, OBS configuration. So here's our image that we made. So what we'll do is I've got my USB SSD attached. So we'll write this image out to uh, that drive. <coughs> my password is test by the way. Um, and then we'll um, plug that into a Raspberry Pi when that image is done. Uh, so if we just go to the overhead view, this is what we've got. A mug of tea, which I need to have a drink of. 
Um, this is the catch card. Um, that's the Raspberry Pi. We'll plug the, um, uh, what you call it, USB drive in here. Here we have the controller. <clears throat> and over here we have a, a separate wireless mouse and keyboard. So that's the, uh, the setup. And then I've finished modding the keyboard. So this is uh, my recent mod to, uh, to the keyboard, <clears throat> which uh, I, I think I did at the weekend. I can't remember exactly. So let's, uh, let's take a look. Oh, no, that's the wrong view. Uh, here we go. So that, that has finished copying. So let's turn you off and shut you down. Right, so that's that's actually an SSD, so it's reasonably quick. Um, we'll turn all of this on, and we'll move to the capture view. Now, don't get too excited, because remember, <clears throat> I said there is high probability this won't even boot at all. So let's see how we go. Oh, well, I expected to boot. I think System, bit, system D may have um, a hissy fit. Um, but we'll see. <clears throat> there we go. That that I don't know if you saw that. There was System D definitely saying that was an unpopulated system. <clears throat> um, and what I'm going to have to do to test this is, although this is going to boot into um, Ludo, hopefully now we'll see. Uh, I'm going to drop out because I need to hit, go into the desktop environment side of things to actually check that everything's working. <clears throat> anyway, so this is the basic Ludo user interface. And the reason for the black bar at the bottom is part of this weird um, capture device quirk that I'm experiencing. So the capture device just wants to do uh, 1920 by 1200, not 1080p, hence the black bars that you can see there. So we're just going to drop out of here back to <clears throat> um, the display manager and we're going to log into the little integrated desktop environment that we um, we bundle here. Uh, what have I done? There we go. So I'll just make sure that we've got the desktop environment highlighted and we'll log back in. That didn't get that right. It's quite difficult to type test, it turns out. <clears throat> oh. Oh. Yeah, so that system D thing was more important than I realized. I clearly busted it. <laughs> so that doesn't work. But what we can do is this is this is not a problem. We can turn this off. We can come back over here. We can very quickly regenerate a new image, which isn't completely busted. <laughs> so let's go and do that. We'll, um, we'll do that uh, here first of all. So let's just move that keyboard to one side so I don't get horribly confused. So, um, Will, although this is the wrong condition, it doesn't actually break the system. <laughs> the ovals, yes, indeed. <clears throat> I, I, I need to, I've got an improved version of that at home. I need to, I need to integrate. So we'll just do that and then we'll come, just check again that we're only building from the config stage onwards we are. So back to the VM and we'll just rerun that build. So you can see, I don't know if you saw at the top there, but it very quickly just pulled in stage four over the top. <clears throat> uh, uses rsync with a bunch of flags to basically duplicate stage four over the top of stage five so that stage five can then run, you know, from that same initial, um, initial uh, place. So uh, magic star, magic, magic, Aros, I think that is. Hello, welcome. Um, asks ArmHF, 32-bit. Uh, what Pi do I have? So it's actually a Pi 4 that I have here. Um, the OS that I'm building is ArmHF. 
and that's because I want to try and get this working on the, a single um, OS image that works on the Pi 2, 3 and 4. Um, so because some of these um, emulators um, that I'm interested in, I want to build devices that are just running NES games and I think I can get away with a Raspberry Pi 2 for that. And then some of the other more advanced uh, emulators, they all need a three or a four. So I'm trying to cover all of all of that in one in one thing. And also, as Yannick points out, Ludo currently only has a 32-bit build that they publish at the moment. I could could build my own. <clears throat> and this build tool, uh, there is a simple toggle. In fact, I'll show show you as you've you've asked the question. There's a simple toggle here. <clears throat> um, here I could change this to ARM64 and it will build an ARM64 image um, with the exception that Ludo uh, currently is ARM HF only so the rest of the build tooling can spit out a 64-bit image and I may do that at some point in the future but hopefully that answers your question um, let's see did that finish Right, okay, so we've spat that out, so we'll, um... oh, oh gosh, I need to, un... oh, what have I just done? That was wrong. Let's click in the right place, unmaximize that. Um, and we'll push this image back onto the SSD again. <clears throat> Um, and hopefully uh, it will boot and I'll be able to log in as a regular user this time. <clears throat> See you real late. Thanks for stopping by. So um, Yannick says, by the way, my virtual screen was not working that well on vanilla Ubuntu, but I'm happy to report it works perfectly with Ubuntu Mate. Go green. Oh, look, I'm wearing the right top and everything again. Gah, brilliant. Pleased to hear that, Yannick. <clears throat> I was using that um, that virtual screen trick when I used to run, you know, proper Ubuntu as well. Um, but that was one of the reasons why I got into using that NV FBC stuff to overcome some of those shortcomings because it sidesteps the graphic stack entirely just uh, cop copies directly off the frame buffer so you know it it was a way of getting that stuff to work <clears throat> right then nvfbc is one of those protocols that's at the heart of what nvidia branders um shadow play on windows Right then, so we're done here. We've plugged that into the Pi. So what do we do now? Let's um, let's turn it on. Let's see what happens this time. Well, hopefully it's going to function more or less normally. <clears throat> so, well, there we go, Yannick. It's all plain sailing from here, all with all with a tint of Chelsea cucumber. Welcome, welcome to the team. <laughs> uh, oh, wow, that was a lot of output. What was all of that then? I didn't didn't catch all of that. Oh no, I know what the problem is. I haven't actually fixed it at all. I've just made it worse. <laughs> Should we go and should we go and have a look at the mistake that I've made? This isn't go, this isn't going to improve anything. We'll we'll press escape all the same and see if we can log in. But I'm pretty sure I've made it worse. Um, uh, let's try. Let's just try logging in here. Yeah, that's. I will show you my mistake. Turn this Raspberry Pi off because that is a trash image again. Because I only half fixed it this is the difficulty with when you're live streaming and also trying to like do stuff you oops and that's also the wrong transition but there we go 
Um, let's um, let's go here. So whilst we corrected the condition in the system D unit, what we did not do <coughs> is actually <laughs> make sure that a empty machine ID file was in the OS image. So let's fix that, come back over here, run out that last couple of stages again. And uh, now we'll have something that hopefully we can boot and log into. So as you can see, uh, that that little integration, it's a small thing, but you know, I want all of the bits to work properly. And um, I think I need to start making some notes. I, I think I'll probably do this through GitHub issues, but um, I've noticed that when you're using the controller, which is obviously intended to be the primary input device, um, the screen blanker will come, kick in because it hasn't detected any keyboard or mouse input. So I need to completely disable um, the screen blanking because you don't want to be in the middle of a game and then have the, the screen go into um, uh, power save mode. So that's one thing I need to do. Um, <clears throat> you will have seen that you can toggle um, whether SSH, Samba, um, what's the other thing? Bluetooth are enabled by default through flipping switches in the Ludo um, user interface. But there isn't an integration between those being set and how the system behaves. So I think I need to add something that actually looks at what the user preferences are as the system comes up and then uh, start and stop those services based on, you know, what the user has chosen to do. I've, I've got an idea how to do that, but that's something I need to look at. But uh, a couple of days ago, I think it was on Sunday, um, I decided to install some of the popular um, sort of retro gaming distros or whatever OS is for the Raspberry Pi. Um, I'll just get this image writer going. Uh, Martin's getting confused which mouse he has to use now. Um, right then, here's this one. It's, it's on the wrong screen though. There we go. <clears throat> Let's put you on here again, just in case you don't recall, my password is test by the way, as it is Voludo at the moment, I probably need to change that at some point. <clears throat> uh, I think I might make it retro remix or something like that. <clears throat> um, so yeah, there's a few integrations that I need to work on, but I installed all of these different, you know, things like RetroPie because I, I was trying to see how they performed and it was when I realized their performance on, on my things was also shonky except for RetroPie which was using the frame buffer as opposed to X or Wayland. So I thought, oh, I'm gonna have to use the frame buffer. How do I do all of that anyway? Long story short, I tried a bunch of stuff out. Um, I remember being super impressed with RetroPie. The last time I think I created a device with it was at like the end of 2017, beginning of 2018. But using it now, it feels, it doesn't feel right. You know, there's so much of its menus where you get thrown into a um, NCURSE's user interface and you're using your controller and now the buttons are mapped differently from how they're mapped in emulation station. <clears throat> and then things that are using RetroArch, you are just overwhelmed with, you know, options. Like, why would I even know? Like, when I give these devices to the kids, why would they want to go and change from X or GL rendering to SDL? Why is that even exposed in the user interface? So this is why I think Ludo is terrific, because it really gives you that sort of console experience. So having played around with things like Laka and uh, RetroPie and Batacera, which are all terrific, and I would be perfectly fine using, it's not what I want to put on these things to give to the kids to play at Christmas. Um, because it's just there's a load of stuff in there that just gets in the way of picking it up and playing some games so I'm really uh, quite optimistic about where Retro Remix is going and that's even before we start getting into making bespoke versions of it for handheld uh, stuff as well 
Right, should we have one last go at this? Let's see if we can get this thing to boot. At least do something. In fact, I'll tell you what, well, let's be optimistic about this. I'll stick it back in here. Let's switch to this view. Uh, and let's go to the machine here, the local machine. I have uh, here. Oh, oops. Where did I copy those? <laughs> okay, I did. I, I must have moved those at home and consequently they're no longer here either. No. Okay, I have no ROMs. Okay, so I can't actually play any games here because I've copied those off somewhere apparently. Oopsie, never mind. Right. Yeah, I'll, uh, I, I could probably fix that by logging into home and moving them back in there, but I, let's, let, let's start to complicate things. We, let's see if we can get the, 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 the thing to boot. So, turn it all on again. And let's see if we, uh, we bring it up. So DJ Razor says Ubuntu is serving them well. Uh, yeah, another fine distro, that's for sure. I'm just going to pay attention to what's happening in the uh, in the early boot messages, uh, which I am obscuring, by the way. That's the other thing I need to get my new system in place. <clears throat> OK, so there's the file expansion. And I didn't see that was something to do with audio. I'm not sure what that is. <clears throat> Let's just see if this is all going to behave. So I see Linux Paul is uh, drawing my attention to the fact there's a Godot game jam starting tomorrow. How how long does that game jam run for, um, uh, Paul? <clears throat> I know I won't be entering this one. <laughs> I don't I don't have time at the moment. I've got a number of things I I need to uh, I need to get uh, get working on. Um, what well, I say get working on uh, pick up and do stuff with so right then let's see what have I done I've completely broken it maybe system D wasn't at fault well somewhere I have broken my image that's annoying I'm gonna have to figure that out later uh, well <clears throat> bother is uh, all I can say for that did I check did I change the password mm. uh, I'm just trying some options here I Apparently I didn't. Let me just go and have a little look at um, see if we actually still are using I thought we'd be using test as the password but apparently we are. So I wonder what I've done there then. Because I've clearly broken it. Bother. Uh, and we're not doing that. Okay. Uh. Well, I have broken something here, and I don't know where or how. Um. Yes, disappointing indeed. Uh, what stage is this in five? So it is doing that each time we did the rerun. Well, I'll need to figure out what's occurring there because I've busted something. Mm, let's just try something as a as a random idea. Uh, let's just go here and try. Oh, use the other keyboard. Mm. 
Mm, nope. Hmm. Well, bother. Um. Fiddle. <laughs> All of that. That was. This was working at home. So I don't know what I've broken there. Uh, I'll have to have a little think about that. Um, right. So that clearly needs. <laughs> I know what. I, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I think the correct sentence is, yes, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> or in my case, I, I have no clue what I've broken because uh, it still says the password should be test there. Bother. Oh, well. So other than that not working now, um, I I will need to, I need to do some investigation. But as I was saying, there's a few integrations that need some work. But actually... Um, when I put some ROMs on this thing and indexed them all, uh, and I'd figured out this that, that there was there was this um, weird performance issue being introduced by the capture card, and I moved it onto some other screens, um, I got thoroughly engrossed in playing some games, and I have to say, uh, I found uh, 1942 for the NES to be a very accurate representation of the arcade version uh, 1942 in the arcades was one of my all-time favorites um, because I was very good at it and I could uh, it was a, an arcade game I used to play when we went on holiday to Spain and I could get a good four or five hours gameplay out of a single 25 peseta coin <laughs> um, back then so yeah um, you know and I'd have people watching me for hours as I you know scrolled uh, endlessly through the game it was it was brilliant um, so yeah, I enjoyed the NES version of 1942 and I had a little bit of a go at Super Mario on the NES. Um, I think I prefer the Game Boy. I had a Game Boy. I never had the Nintendo Entertainment System or a SNES, but I did have a Game Boy. Uh, there was a period where I lived with my grandparents. I did one week at one grandparents and one week at the other grandparents for a, for a long while and um the only sort of like tech i had i didn't have any computer or anything like that was a game boy so i was very sort of entrenched in the game boy ecosystem for a long time and i had a lot of a lot of the mario games on the game boy anyway so i'm looking forward to recreating that game boy handheld device and putting some game boy color games on because i never had the color version i had the you know the original um gray scale thing with that awful screen <clears throat> right yes david yeah we're a bunch of you know old uh uh linux neck beards here <laughs> right then um i think what we'll do is we'll probably start to wrap up there um because i've i've started thinking about what needs fixing not least the fact that that password is, is is misbehaving and i don't actually know why so i'll add that to my list of chores for this evening to to dig into and i think what i'll do is i'll mop up all of the main issues um so that i can push all of this stuff to github and then people can actually start generating their own images and testing them because um actually playing games on this thing is actually really good fun uh, and that's the place I want to get to because the bit that I'm most looking forward to is when we get to things like this which have got um, some GPIO um, interfaces in them for doing uh, power on and power off I want to actually start integrating all of that stuff into uh, the builder so you can build an image for a particular case and get all of that hardware support integrated as well so that's where i'm like keen to to move this to because i think we've got the basic fundamentals although yannick mentioned something the other day which i kind of dismissed a little bit but has been on my mind since so yannick said was there a uh, was transmission or a torrent client in the um, the desktop environment. And I said no, because I'm trying to keep it minimal. But then again, it occurred to me, this is probably the only desktop environment where having a torrent client there by default actually makes sense, given that much of these like archives of ROMs exist on archive.org as torrents. So maybe I'm going to build out 
that desktop environment by adding Epiphany as a web browser, so you can go and find them and then have transmission there so that you can download them. So you can actually use that desktop environment piece in the Retro Remix to actually download and also put ROMs on the device as well. So, hey McPhail, how are you doing? Nice to see you here. Are you using RetroArch? No, we are not using RetroArch because as you say, there are less horrible options. So we're using Ludo. In fact, um, I'll just reboot this device uh, and it will boot into the uh, into Ludo itself if you've not seen it. So I, for, for whatever reason, I've broken the regular user login, but the the default thing will boot into um, into Ludo. So I'll show you what Ludo looks like, kind of, but I can't put any games on it at the moment to show you like how the rest of it works. But you'll you'll get an idea from this. So I'm thinking that um, Yannick, I'll probably stick transmission in there and Epiphany. Um, which is going to make the image a bit bigger, but at the moment this image is is considerably smaller than the pre-installed Ubuntu server image because of some of those optimizations that I did earlier that I, I mentioned at the at the front of the stream. So uh, McPhail says they've been using RetroArch on the Xbox and it's been driving me up the wall. Yeah, it's it's great. It's a very comprehensive bit of software. I've just turned the chat off. Um, but it's too much and as i was saying what i'm trying to make here is something that i can put on devices for the kids at christmas so this is ludo which is from a team of developers in the lib retro team who are you know also work on retro arch but when it comes to settings look you've got to managing your wi-fi which also brings up an on-screen keyboard i'll demonstrate um this is a slight bug you have to it's only on the second time of asking so if I go in here this is all I'm using a controller for all of this so you know this is a fully controller managed experience um, I'm just going to put in the wrong credentials just to sort of move off of this he says um, so the sum total of the settings here are you know what video filter you want so you can't there is a nice C, the crt filter on this is ace i loved it um there's also a dark mode which you can turn on and off and down here you can also toggle whether you want samba on or off up oh, have i just locked it okay so whatever i've done has also reintroduced this samba bug which is interesting so i've obviously done something fun so i've just busted it mcphail but anyway, hopefully you get an idea there. It's um, it's a much neater, cleaner user interface <clears throat> than RetroArch. It, it's got all of the capability, but it's got none of the complexity. So I'm, I've been enjoying working with it. Um, hello there, Yigit. Welcome to the stream. Um, oh dear. Uh, that's another one of those spammers, isn't it? Right, we need we need moderators here. I think the next by well, the time I stream next, we'll have a team of mods here because um, this is happening with monotonous regularity now. So sorry, it wasn't a more comprehensive demonstration, McBail. Um, but the other advantage of um, Ludo is that they have hand-picked the um, uh, what you call them the cores that it comes with so consequently you don't have all of this uh, use this core use that core you just import your games and it just knows what to do with them um, and they've they're quite opinionated about the cores that they've picked and they've picked them based on you know uh, accuracy of emulation and all the rest of it so it, it works r really well thank you for the follow arvind <coughs> underscore ramachandran hello arvind welcome to the stream thanks very much for the follow so um yeah i'm super happy with it and what i may do is i might do i don't know if i'm interested in this is maybe i'll expand this retro remix thing to um build 
images for PC for people that have got NUX and stuff like that. Because I've got a couple of old NUX that I don't use for anything. And I was like, oh, well. But I don't know. We'll see. Um, so is this still using the Pi? Uh, yes, uh, this is all built for Raspberry Pi currently. That's the current focus is uh, the Pi 2, 3 and 4. And also, hopefully, Compute Module 3, because I've got a handheld device with Compute Module 3, and also, hopefully, the Raspberry Pi Zero. So I'm, I'm trying to build something that runs on all of those to meet the requirements of all of these. I've got a whole bunch of, this is just one example, but I've got cases like this for different types of um, retro console um, and handheld and I want to try and build support for all of them. So that will move into more the hardware hacking stuff uh, in the future. Right, it looks like we're gonna get um, an ad in a minute, but let's go and see who else is um, streaming at the moment. <clears throat> um, I um, would like to find, oh, juicing, that's, that would be an interesting topic. Um, that one could be interesting. <clears throat> There's loads of people learning Rust, I've noticed at the moment. It, it, did I miss a memo? Is there is there a reason why Rust is the hot thing? I just see loads of people. It's, it's just constantly in my orbit. I'm hearing about Rust an awful lot. I'm wondering if something happened recently that, that, that boosted its, its relevance or prominence. <clears throat> Um, well, okay, I'm going to go with what I saw up here because I'm not quite sure what this is, but it looks interesting. Is it in English? I think it is. So we'll, we'll pick this one. Yep. Okay. Let's, uh, Let's go here then. Oh, I've turned the chat off. I do apologize. There we go. So we got any other questions? Uh, I. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so let's see. I've noticed a few devs going to Rust, but yeah. Maybe looking for a job at System76. Very funny, Paul. Well done. Thanks, thanks for stopping by everyone. Let's let's kick off um, a raid here. So I'll uh, start that process here. Um, I will be back tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning for sure. So let's, um, uh, that's fine. Uh, let's do this thing. Right, thank you all very much for coming. I'll be back tomorrow morning um and uh we'll either do more of this or some quick mu stuff haven't decided which because both are uh prominent at the moment so um see you soon have a good day uh i need to click that button and then push this one bye for now <laughs>